This episode starts off with a group of rebels trying to rebel against Ozai. It's a lost cause and they seem to be aware of that. But they don't care at this point. They're fed up. They got an inside man who turns out to be Azula, which makes things more confusing. Because the way Ozai talks to these people gives me the idea that these rebels are some Fire Nation peasants. And it makes things funnier because they don't seem to know what their princess looks like. Because it is Azula that infiltrates them and sets them up to fail. Now, <laughs> this situation is very funny because they desperately try to show us how badass Ozai is. But in reality, they pull up the opposite. Because really, my dude, you infiltrate a bunch of rebels who have absolutely no chance of succeeding, who have absolutely no chance of taking you down. But Ozai's like, yes, I'm ruthless. But you know what? I also have a brain. A big one, in fact. Which I don't argue with. And this lowlife rebels, they know of Avatar's return. I don't know how they know, don't ask me, but they know. Because up until now, Avatar's return has kind of been low-key. You know, only a selected few know, you know, Ozai, General Zhao, and Zuko and Kiyoshi. Why is it every time the plot requires Katara waterbend, she waterbends, but when the plot doesn't require her waterbend, we get a scene of her waterbending and failing. So we're going to Omashu this episode. It is hard to get inside Omashu because the security is tight, but boy aren't we lucky today, because somebody is gonna help us get inside Omashu. Uh, and you know, I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, why is this six feet tall guy with perfect teeth, luscious hair? Um, I'm sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, why is this guy helping us? You know, but then I look at him, look at Katara, and I'm like, you fucking dog. I know exactly what you're doing, yeah. Makes no sense. In the last episode, Kyoshi Warriors helped us for no reason. I mean, for obvious reasons. I promise you I'm done with Careless Whisper, okay, let's move on. But this time around, uh, this dude's helping us for no reason. None of it makes sense and I'm here for it. We get into Omashu and a big explosion happens and we're instantly blaming fire dudes for it, okay? Who can it be? Who else can it be, right? And then we're introduced to Abed. Now, Abed, Abed, the greatest filmmaker of all time, if you don't know. And if Abed being the greatest filmmaker of all time cannot carry this show, I don't think anybody can. Spoiler alert, he can't. Aang sees the destruction and people hurt and he goes like, man, I gotta pull up big time. My name is Aang. And I'm the Avatar. I ran away. But I'm back now. After all, I'm the Avatar. Right? Just a little bit of character development. Sokka goes out and has like a fatherly son moment with Abed. Later, Katara witnesses Abed with a fire dude, and, you know, she goes out with Jet, uh, they stalk the fire dude, they defeat him, and then five minutes later, Katara's oversharing too much information. Psych! I lied about Carol's whisper. I made a joke about Katara being autistic, but the more I look at her, the more I'm convinced that she's an antisocial autistic person. But you know, as an autistic person, I can relate because sometimes it do be like that. Sometimes I just meet a person and five minutes in, I'm sharing too much information. Jet asks Katara what she remembers about her mom and Katara says, I remember waking up in the morning and, you know, making breakfast and shit. And Jet goes like, remember that. Are you dumb? Zuko pulls up with Uncle Iroh and Zuko looks at the destroyed building and goes like, what happened here? And then Uncle Iroh is like, fire dudes. And then Zuko goes like, nah, 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 nah. My father would not approve of such strategies, you know, hiding behind and sneaking like a little rat. And I'm like, Zuko, my dear, it looks like you don't know your father because your father be pulling moves out of Blackbeard's strategy book, you know. He up in his throne and going, <laughs> Aang rushes back, Katara rushes back, and they all go like, I know who did the bombing. Katara says, well, I met this boy five minutes ago, really nice guy, we found out who the terrorist is, it is Abed. As soon as Sokka hears this, he goes up in his feelings, like, really Katara? Really? Just because the guy looks Middle Eastern does not mean he's the bomber, okay? Jesus Christ, they don't let me be sexist just for one episode, and they're okay with you being Islamophobic racist piece of yeah. This f***ing yeah. double standards, man. So Katara gets up on her feelings and, and runs back to her boyfriend and finds out that Jet's crew is actually trying to screw up Abed. And she realizes she made a mistake. So now we gotta stop Jet. But boy, isn't Zuko's timing perfect. 
Aang is like, alright guys, you go ahead, I'm gonna deal with Zuko. Now Zuko's nerfed in this fight because Earth Kingdom, right? We lay in low, so no fire magic. But remember this fight because it is very crucial for power scaling later on in the show. So Zuko gets his ass handed to him and is forced to use magic. And as soon as he uses magic... That's the sound of the police! So now they're trying to run away, I'm looking at the guards and I'm like, listen, y'all are Indian looking guys and like three Asian dudes are running around the city. And it just so happens that fire dudes are Asian. Now I ain't the one for discrimination, but I just think you can pull an LAPD or something in this case, you know? And oh my god, does Uncle Iroh realize this? He starts firebending in the middle of the city, buys some time for Zuko to get the fuck out and, you know, gets himself locked up but katara being the master waterbender that she is she pulls up big time at the last second saves the day everybody's happy except for boomy oh yeah we saw boomy boomy yeah i'm excited for the next episode now um this episode was horrible i feel like the next one is gonna be horrible -er. but yeah thanks for watching um please hit, hit, the, hit, the, hit the hit the hit the hit the hit the subscribe button and uh yeah thanks thank you thank you and when I'm long gone, whole crew singing swan song. Cause we all just ticking time bombs. Got a Lambo like LeBron's mom. And no matter where all of my friends go, Emily, Fam, and Lorenzo. All of them people my camp, at least I think so.